Thank you to the sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about some books that I hope to read in March. I can't believe it's March because it feels like it's still March 2020 to be honest, but I feel like we're all feeling that. But that being said, I have been having a fabulous time with my reading, so I am really excited about the books that I want to read this next month. I kind of had to like stop myself and be like, okay, you're being ridiculous because I, for TBR videos, I just go to my shelves and I'm like, what looks interesting? And I think maybe because I'm in between books right now, I just kept on like, pulling off basically every single book off my shelf and it was like that looks great like that looks interesting like I just have been wanting to read all kinds of genres which has just made me be in a mood where I want to read everything and then it makes it hard to decide what to read next because I just want to read everything at once like it is the ultimate struggle, honestly. But it is great because I'm feeling like so pumped up to read. So last month I did a little experiment where I read 100 pages a day for a month. I think the video for that will be coming out after this one. I'm not exactly sure, but I will link that down below when that is out, but it had wonderful impacts on my reading. And for this month, I'm hoping to read between 50 and 100 pages a day. I'm not going to be like pushing myself as hard as I was last month, but I think I can really easily read read 50 pages and keep up the habit of reading, which will be great because like I said, it worked out very well last month. So last month I had the goal of reading six books because I'm trying to read 100 books in a year, which means two books a week. And my original plan for that was to do an audiobook and a physical read, but I've actually only listened to one audiobook this year. I have been listening to one like currently, but they just have been taking me a really long time because I haven't been in the mood for listening. So physical reading has been working out really well, but my goal was to read six books and I ended up reading 15, possibly one more by the time like the month is over because I'm filming this before the month is over. But my goal for the next month is to read eight books. If I can read more than that, which like with the way things have been going, probably that would be great. But there are also some factors. So I might be moving. I'm not going to say like where we're moving to, but it will be a pretty big move. It's just I don't know if it's happening yet. So obviously if that happens, that's going to take up a big chunk of my time and it's going to be kind of chaotic. So that might put a little bit of like breaks on my reading, but we'll see what happens. So like I said, we have like a little bit of everything here. Honestly, like there is no rhyme or reason to this. It is just chaos. I have some fantasy. I have some sci-fi. I have some contemporary historical fiction, like literally a little bit of everything that I like to read. So that being said, the first book that I'm hoping to get to in March is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. So this I actually will be doing a reading vlog for because I'm going to be doing a vlog where I read like the book that everyone can't stop talking about. And this is that book. It has been so hyped up and I have had it on quite a few TBRs to be honest, but I just have kind of like been hesitant to go into it. I'm very intimidated by it. But it is all about a girl who sells her soul to the devil and the consequence of that, like she gets to live forever. That's why she does it, not just for fun. Like, hey, do you want my soul? Yeah, sure. No, there is a deal there. <laughs> but she sells her soul to the devil so she can live forever. But the consequence of that is that no one will remember who she is. Like she's forgotten immediately by everyone she ever meets. So that just like, I've talked about this before, but honestly, the writing of that stresses me out. Don't know how she did that, but like, super impressive. So I am definitely intrigued, but I also am so scared to read this one. And I think it will be a really fun one to do a little vlog reading. So I hope that I will be able to squeeze that in in March and we'll see. Like, I'm just, I'm really scared of you, but like, you could be good. I don't know. We'll find, why am I talking to the book? Whew. Wow. Next I have a contemporary that I possibly was going to read in February, but it didn't end up happening. So now it has found its way to my March TBR and that is Chasing Lucky by Jen Bennett. I read so many Jen Bennett books last year and this is her latest release. And I had kind of wanted to read it around Valentine's Day, but I just had so many other books that I had wanted to read that this one fell a little bit behind. I think because I was looking for something like a quick contemporary and 
and I don't find hers to be the quickest reads. They have more of like a medium, sometimes slower pace. So that's why I didn't decide to pick this one up. But I think that in March, I will probably be getting to this one because I'm trying to break up like my historical fiction and fantasy reads with contemporary so then I don't really get burnt out. So I think this is one that I will be gravitating towards when I need one of those little like palette cleanser reads, if you will. But this is about the main character who she goes back to her family's like New England hometown and they live in this small town. They have this bookstore and she has pretty much been nomadic her entire life. Like her and her mother just go wherever. She's an aspiring photographer and she expects this to be just a pit stop like the rest of the places that she's been. But it ends up that they are going to be staying a little bit longer than she had expected and she has a run in with the town bad boy. So of course there's going to be a romance there which is to be expected. I love how Jen Bennett writes romances. I do tend to really enjoy them. Like Starry Eyes is the only one that I kind of have meh feelings about. But other than that I've really liked them. I love how she writes interesting hobbies and also her settings are really great too. So super looking forward to this one. As I mentioned, I am being very ambitious this next month and you can tell I'm being ambitious because I am including Crescent City House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass on a TBR. I have not included this book on a TBR because I knew it just wasn't actually going to happen even though it's kind of always been in the back of my mind of like I should get to that soon but I just I like build up these books in my mind and then I become too afraid to read them and it's a terrible habit but that is definitely something that Crescent City has suffered from. I know it's House of Earth and Blood but like it's just so much easier for me to say Crescent City so I'm just gonna do that. But this is Sarah J Mass's first adult fantasy like actually categorized as adult fantasy and it came out last year. Did it come out in 2020? I think it did. I can't remember if it was 2019 or 2020 but I think it was 2020 but this has to deal with like angels and demons and murder and I've heard some really great things about it but I just have honestly been terrified to read it like her books are so big and I just I don't like big books generally but I definitely am willing to give this one a go I haven't read a Sarah J Mass book in so long still not done Throne of Glass I do have A Court of Silver Flames and I like I'm just like I feel like I should read this one and then finish <laughs> with the Throne of Glass series and then I will get to the new Akotar book but we have like a little bit of a plan here so if I can get to this one this month we will be like rolling with things. Next up is a book that I pretty much like for sure will be reading in March and that is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. Now that I'm holding up this book actually I totally had a dream that I got a finished copy of this. That's all I can remember about the dream but it was like the purple hardcover because they actually changed it to the yellow color but yeah that was a not interesting story but you're welcome. So this is the latest release by Christina Lauren. They are my favorite romance author duo. I really love their romances like Josh and Hazel's Guide to not dating is a fave of mine. Also love in other words like they just write really great romances and this one is all about the main character is a single mother and she signs up for this dating service that is DNA based and she actually ends up being a I think it's 98% match with the founder of that dating service. So she's been kind of skeptical about that before but now since it's like scientifically based she is like maybe this will work and that is the setting for our romance. So it definitely seems a little bit different and pretty interesting and I just I love their books like they read so so quickly so really looking forward to this one. Next is actually another adult romance and that is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. So I had pre-ordered this and it just came in and I have heard such amazing things about this book that it definitely went like skyrocketed on my TBR to be honest. So it's about a girl who she meets the woman of her dreams and it's just when her life is falling apart. Like I honestly don't know too much about the synopsis. I know that she is kind of feeling lost and I heard it was a really good book for when you're feeling kind of like unhinged and like there's not a place where you like belong or you don't know what you're doing with your life. Like kind of that mid I guess quarter life crisis more so is what this book deals with. I could be totally wrong on that but that is just kind of what I've seen floating around and like I said I've just seen so many rave reviews that I'm like one that sounds like a topic that I, like I need right now and two since I've heard such amazing things it has made me really interested in this so definitely hoping to get to this one soon. I've heard that like it is a romance but it's definitely more of that like emotional romance like beach read and love in other words like the 
those that have kind of more of that level to them, but I really enjoy those, so we shall see. Next up is A Fell Love Story by Lone Lee. So I don't know what it is right now, but like I kind of just want to read all the books about like baking and cooking and romance, and I have quite a few. I don't know why, but I will be doing, like my plan with those books is once I read them to like make a recipe from them and do a video with that, I'm just kind of waiting right now. I'm not quite ready, don't quite have the energy yet to do an intensive video like that, but once I get there, it will happen. So this one is about like, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet because it's about rival Vietnamese restaurants and characters from like the family of each end up having a relationship. It just sounds so adorable, like a ton of fun, and I'm really eager to read it. Next up is a sci-fi that has just been on my radar recently, and I can't explain why. There's just sometimes where they're like, there's a certain book that I don't know why, but I just keep on being like, I should read that soon. And lately that book has been Sky Hunter by Marie Lu. I have read quite a few Marie Lu books and maybe I'm interested in this one because her other sci-fi War Cross that I read, I really liked. I guess Legend is also a sci-fi, even though it's a dystopian, but like dystopian is a subgenre of sci-fi. Anyways, this one seems kind of dystopian. It's like dealing with the Imperial Age, but in a fantasy setting and colonialism and all of that. And it's like the one last free nation. But the synopsis confuses me, to be honest, because it's talking about like, if you leave this free nation, then there's also like these monsters that are on the outside. I don't really know. All I know is that like, I don't really need to know a lot. I'm just like Maria Lu. I have loved her writing. She is a fantastic writer. So it has a beautiful cover. It just, I don't know. I don't know why I want to read you, but like I do. Why do I keep talking to the books? This is when you know quarantine is really hitting you. <laughs> Next is A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. So this is a fantasy that is, actually it's like a fairy tale fantasy. It is set in Toronto, which makes me so excited because I haven't read very many books set in Canada. I have like two or three on my TBR right now, this being one of them, so definitely want to get to this. I have once again heard really amazing things about this book. I know it has a lot of queer representation and it deals with fairies. Like, I haven't read a lot of fae books, but I have enjoyed the ones that I have read, so definitely am wanting to get to this one, even though, like, it is, it's a pretty chunky book, but honestly, that hasn't been scaring me as much as usual lately, which is nice. So you guys are always asking me when I'm going to do my Disney Twisted Tales readathon, and honestly, I still don't know because life just keeps on getting in the way. So like, if this move isn't happening as imminently as it might be happening, then I will try and do it in the next couple of months. But if it is happening, then it's just gonna have to wait. And I'm really sorry. My life is like totally up in the air right now. It's very annoying. But anyways, I am hoping to start reading the Disney Twisted Tales finally. So I am going going to start with Unbirthday by Liz Braswell. This is the Alice in Wonderland twisted tale. If you're not familiar with the series, it like asks a question and twists a typical Disney fairy tale by asking that question. So like this one is, what if Wonderland was in peril and Alice was very, very late? So it's just like twisting the story that, you know, you know, twisting the tale. That's why they call it that. But this one I didn't really plan on reading for the readathon because I wanted to like dedicate more time to it. So that is why I'm going to start with this one, but super excited for it. It definitely has been another book that has kind of been sticking out to me recently, so I will be trying to get to it in the next month. Bless you. I don't know if that was the cat or the dog, but someone sneezed. Watch, it's not the cat or the dog. It's like someone who invaded my home. It's not because I can see the cat and the dog. I mean, maybe I can't see the home invader. I don't know. <laughs> What is happening? So we are at the final five books. Like I said, I just, I went to my shelves and I couldn't stop taking things off and I finally had to be like, stop. But the next book is a historical fiction and that is 13 Doorways and Wolves Behind Them All by Laura Ruby. So Laura Ruby has written a magical realism book before and this one, is another one where the synopsis confuses me, but I'm still intrigued in it. So it deals with the Great Depression, but like there's three characters that you're following and one of them is dead. And I don't, I like, I don't really know what that means, <laughs> but it's dealing with sisters who were left behind. They are abandoned at an orphanage and like, it just, I don't know what to make of this one, but I know that I have seen some amazing reviews for it. I generally tend to enjoy the National Book Award finalists and those sorts of books. And yeah, I I don't know what to make. Stop, I was about to talk to the book again. I did read a book recently that was like a World War II historical fiction and it kind of let me down like a teeny, teeny bit, but 
I, I don't know. I just, I'm feeling historical fiction lately. I'm feeling all genres, but historical fiction I really always want to read. Speaking of, I guess I'll talk about the other one that I have here. So I have The Downstairs Girl by Stacey Lee. I have read Under Painted Sky by Stacey Lee, and she has another book coming out this year that I'm so excited for, and it's The Luck of the Titanic. So super pumped for that one. I can't remember exactly when it's coming out, but I did pre-order it. So this one, I don't actually know what it's about. I've just heard amazing things. It's set in Atlanta in 1890 and yeah that's that's all I really know like I got this on my doorstep the other day and I was super excited about it and I just really enjoyed Under Painted Sky and I've heard such amazing things about this book that I am super pumped for it I don't know why I was holding it like this like that was strange so the last three books that I have here are fantasy so next is Wings of Ebony by JL this is kind of like it gives me legend for born vibes because it's that same sort of thing where you have a girl who didn't know that this like whole magical world existed and specifically in this one she finds out that she's actually a demigod and that is so intriguing to me and then she is faced with this decision and has to try and save both of her worlds so I love this cover I think it is so beautiful and I've been into like the urban fantasies lately as well low fantasies and this sounds like a great one that being said though I have also been gravitating towards some high fantasies so the next one is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuco. I've just heard nothing but amazing things about this book and it like it has been everywhere so it's made me really want to read it. It deals with a main character who is very lonely like her only companion is the lady who is her mother but she's also like not the best like she is trying to get her to like kill the prince and like she's so desperate for this human bond that she wants to be part of this ray sharing thing and that's the thing where like the lady wants to use that to try and kill the prince so I think that this sounds like it's going to be kind of sad, but also really great at the same time, which is an interesting combo. Okay, and the final book that I have here that I'm hoping to read in March is Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. So this is a collection of fairy tales from the world of the Hazelwood. This is like the actual book that inspired the Hazelwood because in the Hazelwood, her grandmother, she has this book of fairy tales, Tales from the Hinterland, that she wrote that has like, is called Following. It's a whole mysterious story surrounding it but this is the actual book of fairy tales from that book so I tend to really love those and I also find that I read them super quickly so I think that I will really like this one. So those are all the books that I'm hoping to read in March and now I just wanted to take a second to thank the sponsor for this video Skillshare. So I have been working with and using Skillshare for probably a couple years now and I really love their service. One of the things that I've been working on in 2021 is like learning new things and pushing myself to challenge myself and do different things with my life and they have thousands of classes from all sorts of different teachers and all sorts of different topics and it is so awesome. So it's this online learning platform that you can learn pretty much anything that you want to. I have taken quite a few of their classes in all sorts of different topics and the latest one that I have been taking is writing for self-discovery which features six prompts for journaling for gratitude and growth and this is by Yasmin Shah. Diane. This is such a great course because I love writing obviously but I've been more into like fictional creative writing and it's been really interesting to learn how I can use something that I love like writing as something to heal myself and like get in touch with myself because journaling has never really been something I've done a lot and this is really pushing me to explore that a little bit more and see if it would be something I would like. So definitely love this course and would highly recommend it. It has been really informative and very enjoyable as well. One of the things that has been really helping me through the difficult times is to have something with meaning and have something productive to be doing and Skillshare has been so helpful with that. There are a lot of important conversations happening and I feel like I have been working on igniting my creativity and Skillshare is a platform that really helps with that. If you guys were interested in checking it out, Skillshare has been kind enough to offer the first 1,000 people that click the link in my description 
box down below a free trial of their premium membership. And even after the trial is up, it's only around $10 a month. So it is super affordable to join this community of fellow creatives and learn something and work on improving yourself. So thank you so much to Skillshare once again for sponsoring today's video. Definitely check it out if you are interested. I really love the platform. So I hope you guys enjoyed. These were all the books that I was hoping to read in March. We shall see what the future holds because I don't know, but I hope I can at least get to a few of these and keep my reading up how it has been going. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please let me know what you are hoping to read in March because I would love to know and I will see you in the next one soon. Bye!